begins with an Easter acclamation. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. lesson this morning is from the first chapter of Acts, verses 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, heaven suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from, up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The song for this morning is Psalm 68, found on page 676 through 679 of your prayer book. We'll read verses 1 through 10 and then 33 through 36. Let's hear these responsibly by Holy Burks. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke and the land drives away. And his max will let the fire, so that the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives a solitary of home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. The presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it, in your goodness, O God, for you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, the kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The blood of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Amen. Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Thanks be to God.
Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am acting on their behalf. I am not acting on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. children. Come forward. Oh, Paul McHugh. Oh, Paul McHugh. Yes. 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 Okay. You, you know Mr. McHugh, Paul McHugh, yes? Mm -hmm. Why don't we pray for him? Okay. Dear God, we ask you to watch over us as you 
watch over all your beloved children. And we ask especially that you would watch over Paul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Megan. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus often left people impressed. Impressed with his knowledge of Hebrew scripture. With his comfort in speaking for God. With his control and command over natural forces. With his capacity to heal and to minister to others and with his conquering of death itself through the raising of Lazarus. Throughout the Gospels, we hear of people being amazed, bewildered even, by what Jesus did. And that response is perfectly understandable on human terms. But we miss the whole point if that becomes our principal response to Jesus. Because Jesus came to effect a transformation in our lives, not to impress us with a quality of his own. Rather, the measure of what Jesus has accomplished is in how it changes us, how it changes our outlook, how it changes our behavior, how it changes our relationship with one another, how it changes our connection to God. That change of outlook is on display in the sermon we know as the first letter of Peter. We can call it the first letter of Peter, but it's really a sermon. And the preacher sets forth a distinctly Christian understanding of suffering. Suffering in this understanding is not an anomaly. It is not a sign of divine disfavor but it is rather a means to identify more completely with Jesus, who himself underwent suffering on the way to the cross, and even in a curiously paradoxical way, to display God's glory through suffering. As Robert Cushman, one of my seminary professors, liked to say, Christ transvalues our lives. Christ changes our value system. How we measure our lives, how we live our lives. We live our lives by kingdom values, not by worldly values. Now, a change of behavior on the part of early Christians is what we see described in the first chapter of Acts, the story of the ascension. Here is where Jesus is pictured as ceasing to stand before his followers and addressing them as one person addresses another. But rather than continuing to gawk awkwardly into space and wonder about when they'd see Jesus next, the disciples are being encouraged to gather in community and to pray, to adopt a shared practice of coming together and directing their attention to God in prayer to adopt a posture of expectation with respect to their own transformation, that transformation which we call Pentecost and which we will celebrate next Sunday. This transformation of our own lives is at the heart of Jesus' high priestly prayer in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. 
Here Jesus begins by addressing how the glory of the Father has been manifest in the Son and vice versa. But as the prayer continues, it becomes clear that what Jesus wants to convey on our behalf is how the glory of God is now manifest in us. I have been glorified in them, he declares. In other words, we have seen the glory of God, and we are now bearers of the glory of God through a process of identification and internalization, which ultimately issues forth in our capacity to carry Christ's work to fruition. All these lessons focus our attention on the issue of the appropriation of God's life, God's spirit, God's grace. How we take who Jesus is and what Jesus did and then make it our own. To recall that we are not so much to be impressed by God as to be pressed into God's service, to take on God's values, to embrace God's life as our own. This is a good day uh, to remember this. Every day is a good day to remember this. And certainly every Sunday when we gather to celebrate and to strengthen a deep bond of communion between us and Christ, as we do today in word, sacrament, and community. And to remember that the measure of Christ's transforming work is to be found in the constancy of our devotion and the integrity of our witness. Six of the prayers of the people were counted on page 392 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel 
and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Sam and Anne, our bishops, and for Brooks, our celebrant today. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, turning to your prayer list, we pray especially for Jimmy Griffin, Sandy Marks, Jim Jeffries, Paul McHugh, Jeanne Corona, Dorian Cronick Victoria, Ron Sester, Liam Snipes, Bill and Peggy Dance, Shane Bertoy, Danny Thomas, Benny Riddy, Adrian, Zach Hop, and Butch Ingram, and others for whom our prayers are desired. Clyde Martin, Barry Taylor, Nate Tyler, Mary Martin, Reverend Gabe Gonzalez, the people of Ukraine. And I invite the congregation to make their own petitions and use silence to be your own. Hear us, Lord, for, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Father. In your, in your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, man.
worship continues the Eucharistic prayer team on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your heart. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God praise. thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under you, Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus. Firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our 
our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.